Hello guys, welcome to Inside Electronics. So today's video is all about the clever little engineering behind these 8-pin toggle switches. Now these are made by a company called Gillard. As you can see, it's a company in Punjab and the product number or the part number for this particular model is 713-22. And these switches are rated for 4.5 amps at 250 volts per contacts. And basically, let's say these are a four in one switch four switches in one uh, body whereas two of them will be on normally closed and the other two will be normally open depending on the switch position so you can basically control four devices at the same time two of them will be on or two of them will be off at any given time depending on how you wire this thing so there is a reason why this specific switch requires a separate video because it's actually a clever bit of engineering going on inside this mechanical switch and just to give an introduction i have these three switches in here which i received as a faulty piece and when i look at the switches i found these are having some screws so i thought okay maybe it is uh, somewhat easy to repair and i was correct these are very easy to repair so this video will be a two-part series in the first part I'll show you what's inside one of these switches and uh, in the second part I will show you how you can repair these switches if you have one of them lying around with a uh, non-working condition. So in today's episode let's keep these two switches to the side and let's take a look at this particular switch. So just by looking at the switch you may think that because of switch position is like that you may think the inner contacts will be like that but no. Actually, when the switch is to the right side position, the contacts on the right side are now closed. That means these contacts will now have a continuity between them. These two and these two. These are now open. And if you flip to the other side, you can guess that these four will now be in closed condition and these four are now in open condition. So that's a clever little mechanism doing the work inside. Normally you think because of the pivot in here, you may think that the pivoting action will be like that when you flip it like this the pivot will be like that flip it this way the pivot will like that so normally a person will, will think that when the switch is like that these are the contacts that will be having the continuity but inside the mechanism is a little bit different it's like a kind of uh, that when the switch flips to the one side like if, if i keep it like this then you will understand when I flip it like that the bottom this assume this finger is the uh, actual flipping mechanism and this is the lever that is inside so when you're flipping it this way the whole mechanism will switch the flipping mechanism will switch the other way and when you're flipping it this way the inner mechanism will go on this side so that's the way it actually works so now let's open it and I will show you the clever bits and pieces that are inside to open it it's very simple and let me tell you that there are some not so obvious looking things like these pieces of mica over here which do play a important role in the uh, process of holding these things together which I shall explain once it is open so it as you can see it's made with some kind of plastic base and some mica pieces are inside with metal top and it uses a flat head screw uh, to keep it all together so if you are opening this thing make sure that you will you are holding to the metallic part and the plastic part together because there is a powerful spring inside which will push things apart if you are not holding it properly so as the tension is released from the screws you can now start to feel the spring pushing it backwards and I'll those are the four screws now out these are the type of screws that they are using it's flat head with uh, threads only on the one side of it let me keep this to the side and let me show you how it's inside when it's opened so as you open it slowly so you can see how it is inside so that is one part the top part and the bottom part now separate as I said this right here, let me focus on that, is the 
if it can focus onto that yes so that right there is the mechanism that actually flips the inner contacts that is the lever mechanism you can see and this is the center locking pin this is kind of like a ball and socket arrangement in here because you can see in here a kind of mechanism with a white color cap and this white color cap actually sits on top of this black thing over here which is like that so this right here will make now you can see it much more clearly that it makes a very smooth motion when the switch is flipped so this is kind of like a ball and socket joint so this is how the fluid motion will look like inside this white thing is actually plastic the inside of this thing is any kind of uh, curved so that it fits perfectly inside here like that so you can see it it's creating a better contact so this is now this part will be on top of the spring like that and the spring is what moves. so when you're flipping the lever what you're basically doing you are pushing these things like that let me use a tweezer for the better so this is how the switch is basically working inside you can see those two dumbbell looking things are moving so this is what happens when you're flipping to the right side and left side you can see how the switch is moving inside so that is how it makes contact with the actual terminals so this spring is mounted in a plastic piece and you can see why what was the damage for one of these switches as i said i got these switches in a non-working condition and this was the issue you can clearly see here that the contacts have been melted and you can still see some of the suit that was left behind by uh, whatever that caused that soapness or the blackening or whatever you want to call it and you can still see the plastic has actually deformed by the heat that caused by whatever caused that switch to fail so you can see the issue was there on both the sides you can see the plastic has actually deformed a little bit and these roller kind of things these dumbbell kind of things you can see this one is in a better condition than the other one it sits in in a groove over there you can see and when you are flipping the switch that dumbbell is moving between those two contacts and the duty of the spring is to keep that tightly connected to that one and also to give the uh, lever some kind of stiffness so the tension of the spring is very important in these kind of switches it gives the rigidity of the switch and also that same spring helps the dumbbell close to the uh, actual contact and you can see the actual contacts the electrical contacts that you actually solder on to is shaped in such a way that it can fit the moving contact perfectly once it's actually damaged so if i put the top one over there you can see that it will not hold the dumbbell perfectly i'm calling it dumbbell because it's easier to say that way so if you continue to use this switch it's not going to make good contact and uh, that's not good for long time purposes now these are the interesting bits and pieces and now let's move on to some things that will not look much but has significant value to their presence you can see these mica kind of thing these things so these are actually shaped in a way that it perfectly holds these metallic strips inside you can see there is actually a catch in here and the catch actually matches perfectly with the piece of mica like that if i hope you guys can see that properly see the groove in the mica actually matches perfectly with the uh, metallic contact itself so this metallic piece sits inside the groove which is already in there you can see it over here this thing so the bottom part sits inside on that groove and this top mica is held like that inside so that pushes onto this one so that keeps it from coming apart when it's in operation so that's a clever bit of engineering going on inside these simple looking mechanical switches and now let me show you what the burnt contacts actually look like let me take up these uh, burnt contacts 
and you can see oh that's a micro okay and you can see how badly it has melted it's i think it is brass because the color on the melted surface clearly resembles brass you can see how badly it melted and that was the reason why the switch was not working on the on the first hand so yeah being able to control eight switches at a time is actually a good thing and uh, simple switches like these although they look simple it's a clever bit of mechanical engineering going on inside these to make it actually function properly and one more thing this is one thing i forgot to mention this dumbbell looking thing was actually held in place like that using the uh, black holder so this you have already seen this black thing in action let me just focus on do that you have already seen this black thing in action when i open the switch and it has the corresponding groove to fit the dumbbell inside and this side is actually greased has some kind of grease inside to make the uh, thing move freely if these were actually in a good round shape when you're flipping it like that you can see that kind of that that one over there kind of rolls instead of sliding on that plastic piece so when you're flipping like that it was not actually sliding the metal piece like that it's actually allowing it to roll gradually onto that metal contacts so it's actually a pretty good piece of mechanical artwork going on inside these very simple looking 8 pin switches so yeah that's it for today's videos guys thank you for watching see you in another video